Samson called as he rushed to his mom's room with a knife. Mommy, 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 mommy he shouted aloud. Samson, what is pursuing you? And what are you doing with the knife? Samson's mom asked. Mommy, please come and see what I did to Deborah in the kitchen, Samson said. Samson, what did you do to Deborah? Inquiry is blocked all over your school uniform and hands. Mommy, I used your knife to do what that auntie did to that uncle in that movie we watched last night. And she fell on the ground just like the uncle in the movie. And she fell on the ground just like the uncle in the movie. And I called her several times, but she refused to answer and I tried to wake her up so that we could finish our breakfast, but she did not move her body, let alone respond to me. Please come and wake her up from her sleep so that we can finish our breakfast and go to school, Samson explained innocently. Samson, you did what? Jesus. Jesus. My only daughter. I hope it's not what I'm thinking of. Samson's mom screamed as she rushed out of the room and when she got to the kitchen, she was shocked by what she saw. Once upon a time, they were a couple named Mark and Maria who were married for 20 years without having a child. But God eventually blessed them with two amazing children, Samson and Deborah. Mark and his family were living happily and healthily until Mark traveled abroad on multimillionaire contract, leaving his wife and his children in Nigeria. One night, Maria and her children were watching an action movie in her bedroom when Mama Jude and Nanny walked in and said Samson and Deborah, it is time to sleep. Your rooms are ready, auntie. We are not ready to sleep yet. We want to finish watching this movie first, Samson said. Samson, it is already late. Now you need to sleep so you can get up on time and prepare for school tomorrow, Mama Jude said. What exactly is wrong with you, this woman? Are you so blind that you don't see my children are having a good time? Maria asked. I am sorry, Mo, but I am doing this. So that they do not sleep in class tomorrow, Mama Jude said. See woman, I did not hire you to come and train my children for me. I hired you to look after them. Get out of my room right now, Maria commanded. I will. Ma, but Ma, this type of movie you are allowing these children to watch is not appropriate for their age. You are spoiling their minds. You should not have watched this type of movie with them, Mama Jude said. I think get out of my room. See woman, I do not play with my children's happiness. I am willing to do anything illegal to make them happy because I know what I went through before they were born. Maria said, please Ma. I am speaking from experience and I am advising you as a mother. I have five grown-up children, although four are late. Ma, I know what the children of this generation are capable of doing. My grandson nearly suffocated his twin sister with a pillow when they were younger after watching an action movie, Mama Jude said. You cannot compare your poor wretched children to mine. My children are well-trained and extremely intelligent, unlike the doll that you refers to as your children. Please get out of my present, Maria said as she pushed Mama Jude out of her room. Mama Jude went to her room and started crying and thinking about her little husband. And when Maria and her children were watching the movie, Samson asked, Mommy, did that uncle who just died in this movie really die? No, he did not die. He is just acting. He will wake up after the fight. Maria replied. A few moments later, Mama Jude had a terrible dream about Deborah and Samson, in which she was in her bathroom when she heard Deborah screaming loudly. So, she quickly tied her towel and ran to see what made Deborah scream in that manner. And when she got there, she saw Deborah lying dead on the ground, with blood gushing out of her head and Samson attempting to lift her. Jesus Christ! Samson, what happened to Deborah? Mama Jude asked with great shock. Deborah and I were acting what we saw in the movie, and Deborah kicked me painfully in the stomach, so I decided to push her and she fell and hit her head on the wall, Samson explained. And as Mama Jude was about to rush Deborah to a nearby hospital, Maria drove in and rushed out of the car. Woman! 
What happened to my daughter? Maria asked. Deborah needs immediate medical attention. Let us speed to the hospital. I will explain everything to you later, Mama Jude responded, and he took Deborah to the hospital. However, Deborah died on the way. Maria then accused Mama Jude of killing Deborah and told everyone about it. They arrested Mama Jude and sentenced her to death by hanging. And as they were about to hang her, she screamed heavily and woke up from her sleep. When she woke up, she dashed to Maria's room and saw her still watching the action movie with Deborah and Samson. Please Ma, I want to tell you something very important, privately. What is that woman? She asked arrogantly. Please Ma, what I'm about to tell you is extremely important. And I do not want to tell you in front of these children. My friend said whatever you want to say and get out of my room, Maria said. Please, Ma, I cannot tell you in front of Samson and Deborah. What is wrong with you, this woman? Can't I have peace of mind in my own house? I am sorry, Ma. After today, I will not bother you any longer. Just come and listen to what I have to say. Ma, my heart is pleaded. And Maria became so angry that she poured the juice she was drinking on Mama Jude. Mama Jude sadly went into her room and began crying. Ten minutes later, Mama Jude's spirit became extremely troubled. So she rushed back to Maria's room. And Maria asked her angrily, This woman, what exactly is your problem this night? Please, Ma, just listen to what I want to say, Mama Jude pleaded. I give you one minute to say whatever you want and get out of my presence. And as Mama Jude was trying to tell her the dream, Maria said, Woman, I do not have time for pointless discussions. Keep your foolish dream to yourself. I thought you had something reasonable to say. Please smell away from my presence. She pushed Mama Jude out of her room and locked the door without patiently listening to what Mama Jude was saying. The next morning, Mama Jude awoke fearfully and began saying, I cannot stay in this house any longer. I sense serious danger ahead. And if I do not take immediate action, I will be in big trouble. I need to leave this house this morning, Mama Jude said as she packed her clothes and then went to Maria's room. Good morning, Ma, Mama Jude greeted with folded arms. Woman, where are you going this morning that you are dressed this way? Have you dressed my kid for school and prepared your breakfast? Maria asked. I am very sorry, Mo. I am no longer interested in working and I intend to quit this morning. I don't want to work here anymore. What is your reason for quitting the job? Maria asked. Mo, I honestly do not like how you always treated me in this house. I am old enough to be your mother. It is my condition that has brought me to your house. If my late husband is still alive, my life could not have been as miserable as this. Each time you talk to me like a child, it reminds me of my late husband and made me cry. So, I do not want to work for you anymore because my mind is no longer there. Mama had explained with scary eyes. What is the point of all this nonsense you are talking about? I ask you a simple understanding question. And you told me a story. Anyway, if you want to go, you are free. There are plenty of fish in the river, so I will never beg you to stay in my house, smell away from my presence. Thank you, Mo. But please, Mo, pay my salary. I have worked for three weeks and five days. If you want to receive your salary and leave my house this morning, you must first prepare my children's breakfast. Prepare them for school and clean their rooms before leaving this compound. Get out of my room and do what I ask you, Maria responded. Mama Jude sadly went to the kitchen and began preparing the children's breakfast, after which she bathed and prepared them for school. A few moments later, Samson and Deborah began eating their breakfast and while they were eating, their father called and Maria brought the phone so they could talk to their father. And as soon as she handed them the phone, 
she rushed to her room to dress up so she could take the children to school while Mama Jude was cleaning and arranging the children's room as Maria had instructed. Daddy, when are you coming back? Samson and Deborah asked. I'll be back this weekend. Daddy, please buy me a toy gun so that I can use to play with Deborah, Samson said. Okay, how about you, my princess? Daddy, buy me a teddy bear, Deborah responded. And when the call ended, Samson said, Deborah, let us go to the kitchen and do what the auntie and uncle did. In the movie we watched with mommy last night we will use mommy's phone to video it so that when daddy returns we can show him okay let us go I will be the auntie Deborah. When they arrived at the kitchen Samson placed the phone in a stable position to film them carry two big knives one for Deborah and one for himself. And they began doing what they had seen in movie last night. While they were playing with the knives, Deborah mistakenly injured Samson and Samson angrily used his knife and stabbed Deborah in her stomach and fell to the ground and blood began gushing out. Deborah please I am sorry. Get up. Let us go finish our breakfast. So, mommy can take us to school, Samson said, and Deborah did not respond. Deborah, please talk to me now. I said I am sorry. Stand up. I will not play again. Please let us go and finish our breakfast, Samson said, and he tried to leave Deborah. So after Samson called Deborah several times and receiving no response, he ran upset to their mom's room with a knife. Immediately after Samson left the kitchen, Mama Jude walked into the kitchen and found Deborah dead on the ground. Jesus Christ, this is exactly what I saw in my dream. Please let me leave this house instantly so that this woman does not accuse me of killing this girl, Mama Jude said as she rushed to her room to carry her belongings to run away. When Samson got to his mom's room, he screamed. Mommy, 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 mommy. Samson, what is pursuing you and what are you doing with the knife? Samson's mom asked. Mommy, please come and see what I did to Deborah in the kitchen. Samson said. Samson, what did you do to Deborah? Blood all over your school uniform and hands. Mommy, I used your knife to do what that auntie did to that uncle in that movie we watched last night, and she fell on the ground just like the uncle in the movie. And I called her several times, but she refused to answer and I tried to wake her up so that we could finish our breakfast. But she did not move her body, let alone respond to me. Please come and wake her up from her sleep. So that we can finish our breakfast and go to school, Samson explained innocently. Samson, you did what? Jesus. Jesus. My only daughter. I hope it's not what I'm thinking of. Maria screamed as she locked Samson inside her bedroom and ran recklessly to the kitchen. And when she got to the downstairs, Mama Jude was just coming out from her room with her belongings. Woman, where is Deborah? And where are you going with your belongings? Maria curiously asked. Ma, I do not see Deborah, and I do not want to stay here anymore. Ma, Mama Jude responded fearfully. Where? Follow me to the kitchen right now, Maria said as she rushed to the kitchen. And when she arrived, she was extremely shocked to find Deborah lying dead on the ground and her uniform was soaked in blood. Woman. What exactly did you do to my daughter? Maria asked as she grabbed Mama Jude. Ma, I did not do anything to her. You have the gods to kill my daughter. And you want to run away? You die miserably. Maria then drove recklessly to the hospital a few moments later, Mama Jude began crying and lamenting easily, Oh God, why me? Why me, God? God, did you duplicate me to come to this world to suffer and die miserably? What did I do to deserve this kind of unbearable pain and punishment? I regretted and cursed the day my mother gave birth to me. Oh God, do not let anything to happen to that girl because if she dies I am finished, Mama Jude exclaimed. When Maria arrived at the emergency ward and a doctor attended to her, the doctor said, Mama, we did our best, but you lost her. Maria screamed heavily and slumped. 
Doctor and nurses quickly attended to her. Forty-five minutes later, Maria woke up and began asking, Please my daughter, please my daughter, please my daughter, please calm down, madam. This is not the end of your life, the doctor said. You will never understand the agonies, intimidation and endured before God blessed me with that girl, Maria exclaimed. More, I understand. God will still give you another girl. Please be strong. Maria then called her husband. Hello honey, what is going on? Why are you crying? Mark curiously asked. Debra, 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 what happened to my princess, whom I just spoke with less than three hours ago? Debra is dead oh. Debra is dead oh. Debra is dead oh. Maria, what kind of stupid talk is this?